pivot table reports. Now we talked about filters a little while ago and pivot table reports are kind of similar. So say you want to look at your data but you don't want to actually change it. If you highlight it all just like we did for the filter then we can click data and go to pivot table report. Now that will take you to this kind of interesting looking interface and you'll note it's created a new sheet. This is the, the range of values that we're interested in and we can edit that if you wanted. Now the way it works is you add a row, let's see, right here, and you add a column right here of information and then you add values to be populated based on that row and column and of course you can filter those values. So let's go ahead and add a field in the row, add a row for district. And you can see that populates right here. So now just, just with that, we can add some values. So let's add gender. And it's zeroed because it doesn't make sense to sum those. So if we just do, say, count A, then this is the count of all of the different genders. Well, that's not really that useful. But now if we add a column, of gender. Now this is in useful information. Now we can see that from district one there was one female and one male for a total of two. And down here we can see there's a total of nine females and ten males. That's actually pretty useful. That's a good way of looking at information. What if we weren't so interested in the gender? What if we were interested in, say, whether they survived or not? Well, we can do that too. What if we weren't curious about gender? What if we were curious about if they survived? Well, if we click Add Field under Column and click on Fate, then we can see Alive and Deceased and whether, you know, they made it or not. Well, that's fine, but now what if we were curious about how many women or how many men lived and died? Well, if we go Add Gender to the rows, that's pretty nasty looking, like that's pretty hard to read. But you can see we can move these. So if we click and drag districts down, you'll see it swaps places with gender and that replaces the order. So this is much easier to read. We can see of the females from district one, there's one deceased. Female from district two, there's one alive. Very handy. And this gives us all kinds of information. And we can shrink these so we can only see the so we'll only be displaying the totals to make it a little bit easier to read and of course this is pretty handy you can also filter it if we go add a filter say we want to filter it by age and we can do this again we can say get rid of some of the youngsters okay and then we have this information of course we don't know the ages but that's fine go ahead and close all of these and go through that again a little bit slower so maybe uh, it'll be a little bit clearer I know I went through that kind of fast also on this screen you'd click and drag to select all of the data you're interested in or you can click hold shift and then click again to select data that way and then under the data menu there's a pivot table report. So you would click on that and that'll give you this screen. It starts out blank, there's not much information in it. So now under rows, that's right here, that's which rows we're going to have. It's a little counterintuitive because under rows it populates something in a column because basically it says, okay, everything going this way. So sort of left to right. So if we click add field, we're gonna pick Hmm, we'll pick district again because that's a good place to start. So then you see it populates column A with all of the district numbers. And we can pick if we want them ordered in ascending or descending order. And we can sort it based on district because that's what we have. And this totals button, it's basically this bottom row. So if you don't want the totals on the bottom, you can check and uncheck to get rid of that. Now let's go ahead and add values right away. So if we skip this section, columns, and go... So let's go ahead and add a value. So we'll click Add Field, and then let's click Gender again. And it defaults to Sum, which in this case doesn't really make much sense. Because what we're more interested in is the count. But if we go to Straight Count, it's still zero, because this function, and we'll talk about this more in a little bit, count is concerned with numbers. Count A is concerned with everything. It's numbers, letters, anything. So if we do count A, now we can see there's you know two people from District 1, three from District 2, etc. Well, we were curious in gender, not the people. 
So if we wanted people, we could go add field winner name count A and we'll get the same values. That's not what we're interested in. So let's click this X to get rid of that. Click add field gender. Change it from summarized by sum. Click on sum and change it to count A. That's much better, but we want it broken down by gender. So under columns, if we click add field and then gender, we can see that it splits them out, male, female, and then you can tell from District 1 there was one female, one male for a grand total of two. District 2, two female, one male. It's interesting. You can see how your data comes out. And you can, of course, click these checkboxes to get rid of the totals if you want to. Now, if you want to sort of focus your data a little bit more, under rows you can add another one, say for fate. It automatically puts the new fields after the first one. So you can see it's like this, it's kind of jumbled, it's pretty hard to read. But if we click and drag over here where it says fate, we can click and drag that up and then it'll reorder how the information is displayed. Now this is much easier to read because now we're split by alive, district, and then gender. Alive, then deceased, district, then gender. It makes it much easier to read. Say add a filter on gender and then say cycle out all of the men, click OK, and now you can see the women that survived and the ones that, you know, the fortune was not favoring them. So, that is kind of a brief look at pivot table reports. Now here's a report that's maybe a little bit more interesting. Now these are employee IDs, you can see that's here, and then these are sales total, sum of sales total, max of sales total, and min of sales total. Now the way we're getting that, we're picking the sales total value and summarizing it. The place that came from is here. It's sales data. So we basically picked all of this and went data, pivot table, and that generated this information. And we renamed this pivot table to sales data pivot. So you can see by adding in the month, we can look at each individual employee ID number and see their average total, average sales total. We can see their information broken down by month. The other thing we could do is if we just remove the employee ID, we can just sort this data by the month so we get the average sales total. Now one thing to note, if you apply a number format, that number stays in those cells, so it's important to change it depending on what data you're looking at. So now I've changed it back to number, and now we can see the sums of the, at the average amount of sales per employee per month, the sum, the max, and the min. It's actually kind of interesting and valuable information. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back to the way it was because I'm actually using this information elsewhere. So now where else am I using that? Well, that information is being used here. These values are coming from this pivot table. So essentially what's happening is when I pick this employee, say Teresa, this function is finding her employee ID based off of this value and pulling this number and populating that here. Then this higher date is coming from looking at the, this em column of employee numbers and finding the higher date here. And then this is looking for this value on this table and then returning this value that's associated with it. Now that might all seem a little confusing. That's why we're not going to go into index and match this time. We'll look at that next time. But one thing I want to show you that's kind of interesting is say we come over here to sales data and let's change this value to something, I don't know, significantly smaller. So from 491,475 to four. Now this is for the employee ID 5629. So that's a significant reduction, but we can see that now this is updated and this is also updated. So now, unfortunately, employee number 5629 not doing that well. Well, she's actually still doing pretty well, honestly. Um, Therese is a power player, what can I say? Um, all of this data is, of course, random and not really related to anything. I picked these names at random. I got the dates at random. Everything is random. 
uh, but it makes for an interesting display. So again, looking at pivot table reports. Now let's have one more look at pivot table reports. Now this is data that I made up. It's basically looking at cookies, cakes, and brownies that were baked on a particular date and a particular district. So if we highlight all of this information, click data, and go to pivot table report, we are once again presented with this kind of display. So now we can add field under rows and let's go district. Now we have Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta Echo Fox Drive. Now for values, we're really curious in how many brownies are being made. So we can see it's a sum of brownies made per district. But we are also curious about the dates these have been made. So if we click on bake date, now we can see we have dates on top, Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, etc., etc., and these are the brownies that were made on those dates. So you can see this is a good way of creating reports. We can also change this to average. You see now this goes from the total to sort of the average value, the average number of brownies that have been made that month. We can go max and it will give us the max number, so that's here. You can see, you can go min, look for the median value, a bunch of different information can be gleaned this way. So this is just something that it's good to know exists. The best way to learn how to use it is to kind of play around with it. I will ask you a few questions about this on the homeworks, but not too many. So that's pivot table reports.